I'm going to show you how to create a Slack bot connected to OpenAI. This way you can combine some LLM into your everyday Slack. There are plugins that Slack offers, including Slack itself. As you can see, there are security concerns with that. When integrating AI or anything, be a database into Slack, look at the security, have a little control over the situation because handing over your Slack messages to third party could open your conversation up to anyone. At the very minimum, if you're hiring a freelancer or building an internal project, this video is going to show you what to think about as you develop your own project to keep your conversation safe. It's so easy. Why not build your own? Get started. It's a node project. And here's your NPN, your packages to be installed. What do you need to run this? Any node server will do, but it can't be just one running locally. It has to be one with a real URL, whether it's an IP address or a Heroku address or an EC2 instance with an IP address. I'm using Heroku for this project. It's $5 a month. It gets this project going quickly and has an automation of every time I update Git, it's automatically updated in Heroku. Taking a look at what's going on here, I have environment variables. Environment variables will be the Slack signing secret and the Slack bot token and my API key, which you get from the platform dashboard when you sign up for OpenAI ChatGPT. The code itself, after you do all the requirements and set up the keys, I have two main blocks. The second block is communicating with OpenAI, and we'll get back to that in a moment. This one is all about running a server to listen to the Slack events, waiting for your bot to be communicated with with an indirect message. And then I throw the message into a case. And the default case is just to ask OpenAI anything right here. So get OpenAI response. So going to OpenAI, passing the message, defining the role for OpenAI and send the message. This is my model. And then when this is complete, the response is then sent to Slack. I'm using a case for a few reasons. One, hey, I'm going to give you a fun little Easter egg, but it's really a setup. So this way you can create some more automation. The user message matches this, then I'm going to print out a particular greeting. But what if you want to generate an image or do some transcription of an audio file? That's what this is setting up to be able to do more with my Slack bot than just a single message. And now that we covered both functions, let's start putting all this together, including filling out the environment variables. So this way, Slack and OpenAI can communicate with this script. Go over to api.slack.com slash apps and sign in. And after you sign in, we'll return to this page to create your app. Clicking sign in, the main API page, api.slack.com apps, and create a new app. Left from scratch, give your app a name. Your name could be anything. It doesn't have to be what you named your GitHub project or your project out on Heroku, wherever you're hosting it. This is going to be body AI, and I'm going to connect it to the bot test workspace. This screen is where you're going to pick up your signing secret. Click the show button, copy it. Then jump back to your code, go to the .env file, the place where all your secrets are stored, and paste your secret. Do the same for OpenAI, pasting your key from there into here. The last one that you need to make all this work is your Slack bot token, and that's what we'll work towards next. Scroll down on that page, fill out a little more information about your bot such as adding an icon to it. Make sure the icon is square, 512 by 512 will work. You can pick a different color for the background. Add a short description before you click Save Changes. Now you can click Save Changes. Next, scroll back up and go to OAuth Permissions. Scroll down to scopes, and we're going to add scope, the permission. What can this chatbot do? By limiting the permission to only what you need, you add security and safety to your app. After you add chat right as the scope, 
you know it's not ready to work quite yet, scroll back up and click on install to bot test. Click allow. And that will reveal your token that you need. So popping it, which you'll go back to your environmental variables. And this is the last missing piece. And you'll paste right here. Now that that token's connected, go to event and subscriptions, toggle on enable events, paste the URL of where you're hosting your node app. And you have to add in Slack slash events. Press enter. And now you're verified. So now with the proper sign-in information in your environment variable and proper authorization, your bot is almost ready to be deployed. Let's take a look at event and subscription, where we are now. Under subscribe to event, your bot has to be listening to the channel. It's going to be listening to the message I am when a message is posted in a direct message channel to it. Make sure to click on save changes. And you're going to see you need to reinstall this because permission changed. One last thing to do is go under app home and always show my bot as on. This way people know that it's ready to take messages. Back to that's cosmetic. What's not cosmetic is the ability to send it messages. Clicking down here, scroll further down the page, allow users to send slash commands and messages from the message tab. I'm going to click on reinstall just to make sure everything goes correctly. Okay, after you made sure to check that box so your Slack bot can receive messages, let's give it a test. I'm in a direct message with Body AI, and I'm going to use that trigger word first and hope for the best. Greetings, would you like to play a game? You can start to ask it general questions like, hey, tell me one fact about Gen the and house plants. Now you don't even have to go open AI to start asking questions. But the convenience of this might be let's take this and and rewrite shorter, make about, I don't know, 15 words. And now you have access to the power of your LLM within Slack. The safest place, as I mentioned, is within a direct message. I'll ex explain that right now by taking a peek at the code with you. Slack is listening to the whole chat, the whole DM message. Imagine if we move this out any extra code into an another channel, whether it's private, public, or group Slack. It doesn't have to be AI Slack bot. It's any Slack bot will be constantly listening to your channel. In order to constrain that, if you have to write some switch or if then statement to only allow your chatbot to respond or interact when it hears its name, its name. Hope you enjoyed and please share in your comments what you create.